All right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. This here is a piece of tempered glass, glass which has been heat treated to induce stresses that allow it to withstand forces that would break normal glass, such as a hammer. It took that without any trouble. So let me attempt to explain what's happening here. This is a piece of normal untempered glass tubing. If I loop it through this string, grab hold of each side and lift, you can see that the glass is able to support an anvil. I'm putting a force on this side of the glass. That side of the glass is becoming under compression. The force is pushing the glass together. On the other side, the glass is being put under tension. The glass is trying to be pulled apart. But as long as I don't overcome the tensile strength of the glass, it's able to hold the load. The glass is fairly strong and rigid that way. But now if I disrupt the glass a little bit by introducing a defect. Give it a little bit of a scratch with this piece of barrel here. Now, if I take that scratch and put the string on the scratch, the anvil is be able to be picked up just fine. Now if I turn the glass over so the scratch is underneath on the side facing down, away from the string, the glass snaps in half before the anvil moves. Now what happened is the tensile strength was greatly reduced because I introduced a bunch of tiny micro cracks into the glass. As long as I'm compressing those cracks, the glass is fine because the cracks are being held close. But if I turn it around, now the, now the cracks are wanting to open up and they propagate and the glass breaks in half. Now let's do the same thing again, but this time I'm going to scratch my piece of glass. Now I'm going to tighten these nuts so that the uh, metal bar running through the glass tube is under tension and the glass is under compression. Now let's see what happens when I put this on here. The string is on the side opposite the crack, just like before. I can lift this up. No problem. The glass was able to withstand it. Now let's do the same thing, but I'm going to loosen this uh, nut first. Just like that. So now the glass is no longer under compression. Exactly the same. And the glass breaks. The compression held the glass together so that those cracks could not propagate. And that's exactly what's happening with the tempered glass, except instead of a bolt, what we do is we heat up the glass so it all expands and then suddenly cool the outside so the outside contracts, and then the inside contracts so the inside gets put under tension and the outside is under compression, just like this, just like this little model here. As tough as this material is, it does have a weakness. Let's say I wanted to make a hole in the glass for some reason. I could use a diamond studded bit like this, which basically just grinds through the material. As long as I keep it wet, I can grind through a piece of untempered glass using this bit without any trouble at all. But if I try to do the same thing on a piece of tempered glass... It doesn't work. You cannot cut through tempered glass without causing it to explode. See, what's happening with the glass is if I can grind down to the center of it and introduce a crack to the area that's under tension, then that crack will be pulled open and it'll create a chain reaction which will destroy the entire piece. It pops. If you've seen a piece of tempered glass with a hole in it, that hole was probably cut before the glass was tempered. But I want to know if I could still make a hole successfully in glass that has already been tempered if I use a method that doesn't cut and grind. If there's no vibration, there's no cracks forming, if I'm removing just a few atoms at a time, could I successfully do it? Let's see what happens if I try to dissolve a hole in the glass. I got two soda caps, cut a hole in the bottom of one of them, and I'm going to glue them to the glass using some silicone, which I have previously tested to determine that it is 
resistant HF. Hey, as you can see we're in the fume hood. I've put down some lime and here's the glass with the uh, caps glued on. This way I can put the acid in there and uh, when it dissolves through the glass it'll be caught in this one and it can dissolve from the other side. That way I can end up with a nice round hole. At least that's the idea. Let's just set this just like that. So I guess it's time for the acid. What I'm going to do is add it in just little portions because the glass will form insolubles which makes the dissolution happen more and more slowly so what I'm going to do is uh, periodically remove the acid clean off the glass and start over there I guess. put something over top of it so it doesn't fume and uh, close down the shield. I'll just leave it there and we'll come check on it in a day or two. Okay, it's been another day. Let's see what we got here. Looks like it's developed that crust again. Let's take the acid off and neutralize it. Okay, I'm going to take this, go clean it up, let's see how it looks. So here we are, I've cleaned off all the silicone, now you can see the progress after dissolving for about one week. Let's say I'm right about halfway through the glass. So this is making me think that I might actually be able to get through it using the acid. I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to dissolve from the other side now. Hopefully that'll make it a little bit more likely that it'll actually get through. Okay. Put a little bit more acid in. Start dissolving it from the other side. Well, it popped. I expected this to happen, but last I checked on it, it was three quarters of the way through I was getting really excited that maybe this was a method to actually get through the glass but nope but look at this it's all here okay so I've cleaned off all the acid and I've removed this uh, cap here while leaving some of the silicone behind in order to you know, kind of stick the glass together so we can see what it originally looked like see there it is it definitely thinned it substantially let's take these calipers here and actually measure that it's about 1.2 millimeters and the original thickness of the glass before dissolving about 4.76 here's a little closer look you can see that uh, white crusty material that forms I think this is uh, mostly calcium fluoride so this is soda lime glass, and uh, calcium is fairly insoluble in hydrofluoric acid. Yeah, I was hoping that this would be a method to get through the glass, but you know, even though I was dissolving it slowly over a period of weeks, at some point it just reached a tipping point, and the glass tore itself apart. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. What's happening with the glass is if I'm able to exceed the external uh, compression, which is about 10 to 20,000 PSI, then I can get a crack to open up and go down into the portion of the glass that's under tension. And once that happens, that crack continues to open up and spreads and moves through the entire piece of glass. And the whole thing just explodes. With the hammer, the force is spread out over a wide enough area that you don't overcome the external compression unless you hit it really fast. But if you hit the glass with something that is sharp and hard enough to maintain a point even when it's going against something as hard as glass, such as corundum or diamond, then that force is applied over a much smaller area and you're able to overcome the compression much more easily. This is why spark plugs will break glass whereas a hammer won't.